praise God church we are going to intercede we are going to do our intercessions at this moment let us sit and pray dear heavenly father king of kings we thank you so much for this moment we thank you for this day the 8th of May 2022 we thank you because you have created us the way you have done so Lord father we give you glory for this time we give you glory for this service and we thank you because you have brought us here father your word tells us in Psalms 107 verse 1 that we give thanks to the Lord because his love endures forever indeed father your love endures forever and for that we give you praise Father, Lord, we pray that you forgive us where we have wronged you in our thoughts, in our speech, in our actions, in what we have done and in what we have failed, Lord. Father, we are not worthy, but you have loved us beyond our transgressions. And for that, we praise you and magnify your holy name. Father, we give you glory and we give you thanks because we are here today. We thank you for the life that you have given us. We thank you because you have spared us and kept us up to this day. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our leadership. We thank you, Abba Father, for everybody that you've put in our lives and for all the blessings that you have accorded us even when we are not deserving. We give you honor, my master. Father, now we bring to you our needs. We remember and we bring you the leadership of our nation, Uganda. We lift up our president into your able hands. We lift up all his ministers, his deputies, and everybody that is in the leadership politically and all our civic leaders, O oh Lord. Father, please guide them in everything they do because we know that it is only you who can counsel them and teach them and that they will do everything according to your glory in heaven. Father, we pray for the leadership of our chapel, Thornycroft Chapel. We pray for all our spiritual leaders. We remember the preacher today or the choir and everybody that is here today. We pray that your presence will be here with us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us in everything that we do. May you reduce us, that you will increase, and your glory will be seen in this place, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for the sick. My master, your word tells us in First Peter 2.24 that by your stripes we are healed. Father, we know that you are Jehovah Rapha, you are God, our healer, and there is nothing that is too difficult for you, my master. Father, you heal cancers, you heal diabetes, you heal every disease, and there is nothing that is greater than you are, O oh Lord. And so we come to you in utmost faith and hope that you are more than able to heal all our diseases, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones in the recent past. There's been so many accidents, so many deaths here and there. My master, sometimes as humans, we get worried, but know this today, we choose to stand still and know that you are Lord. We remember the family of Dr. Mulindwa, who recently lost a brother. We pray for them. We pray that your comfort will be over them. We pray for all other people in our community that have lost loved ones, my master, especially in the recent past, we pray that your love and comfort will surround them. Because you tell us in your word, in Psalms 34, verse 18, that you are close to those who are grieving and for those, to those who are faint in spirit. Father, yes, we believe that you are close to those who are mourning. You are close and your love will cover us and give us peace, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for this day. Mary's day as we celebrate the character of Mary, mother of Jesus, for accepting to bear, to bear and bring forth our Savior. We thank you and we pray that even as we go on to learn and to, to hear from you, O Lord, I pray that your presence will be here. I pray that your word will come in the most simplest ways that we shall understand and learn, O Lord. Father, we pray for our families. We pray for families and marriages in turmoil. We pray, Lord, that your peace will come and be in those families, O oh Lord. Father, we remember the children that you have blessed us with. We remember our spouses that you have blessed us with. Father, we pray for them, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that your guidance and your protection and love will be upon them, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for school-going children, those little ones that are going back to school. We pray for the students of Uganda Christian University as they come and those who have already reported to the university. We pray for journey masses, O oh Lord, that nobody and none of them 
will be affected in any way. So they will not see any danger. They will be able to clear their tuition. They will be able to register successfully and have a very successful semester. In Jesus' name, we believe and we continue to pray. Father, Lord, we remember the singles in our community and in our church, oh Lord. Father, even as we celebrate marriage and family, we are mindful of those who, who are single because of one reason or another. We pray, my master, that your love will continue to dwell in them, that your presence will continue to be upon them, O oh Lord, and we pray that you will meet them at their points of need, Abba Father. Father, we thank you. And we give you glory for this time, O oh Lord. We thank you, my master, for the rest of the service today. May you be with us, O oh Lord. Continue to be with us. Continue to guide us, O oh Lord. And let us learn from you as we sit at your feet to hear your word. I pray for a blessing upon each one of us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The collect. Almighty God, who alone can bring order, to the unruly wills and passions of sinful men, give us your grace to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that in all the changes and chances of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where lasting joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Thank you very much. The beautiful women can sit. Now time for the children. We'd like to invite the children to come here. And I'm going to request Mama Pesh to pray for the children as they go to their church. stretch our hands and we pray for these children. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of a new day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you for these children. You've been with them throughout the holidays. All of them, I believe, God, are going back to school. I pray, Lord, for you, God, are our mighty refuge, and underneath are your everlasting arms. Heavenly Father, I pray that your everlasting arms will hold these children against infections, against sickness, against malaria, against all forms of diseases. Father, protect them against any form of abuse, physical, sexual, verbal, Lord Jesus, I pray that you hide them under your blood, where the devil will do no harm. I pray for the teachers, Lord, as they teach them, that they will inspire them, that they will lift them, that none of their teachers will talk to them words that will pull them down, words that will affect their self-esteem, but words of encouragement, words of growth. Father, I pray that these children, young as they are, they will know you as their personal savior because once we know you, Lord, we will not get lost. Father, I pray that their hearts will be after you, Lord. 
and that none of them will ever get out of your hands, oh my father. And now as they go to their class, I silence every other voice, oh Lord, that they will hear from you, oh Lord. I pray that they will be attentive to your word and that the word that will be spoken to them will grow in them, that you alone will water it and it will flourish in their life all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, our first reading is taken from Lamentations, chapter 3, and we're beginning from verse 19 to 24. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 19 to 24. The thought of my pain, my homelessness, is bitter poison. I think of it constantly and my spirit is depressed. Yet hope returns when I remember this one thing. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. Fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. The Lord is all I have, and so I put my hope in him. Brethren, that's the word of the Lord. Thank you. We all stand. Burdens are lifted at Calvary.
second reading. Praise the Lord Church. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, beginning from verse 26. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, beginning from verse 26. Christ's birth announced to Mary. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One, who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maiden servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Brethren, the word of God. Please let us stand and say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We can have our seats. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Please turn to your neighbor and say good morning with a smile in the mask. And the eyes don't tell a lie. <laughs> they will show that you're smiling. Wonderful. I'm so happy to see all of you. We look so beautiful and handsome this morning. And I'm happy to see some of my friends, the students back. Hi, Tasha. Hi, everyone. God bless you. Yes, you are welcome. Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord on this special day? Do you know the day? Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Wow. You a welcome mothers. By the way, you know, in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, when God created, he said it was very good. But at one time, he said mm -mm, it was not good because someone special was missing. Who is that? The woman. Brothers, imagine a world without women. My goodness. 
it will be the worst world to live in. <laughs> Come on, let's appreciate all the mothers and the women in the house. Praise the Lord. And on this special day, let us celebrate Mothers Union members. Oh, let's appreciate the choir. They did an amazing job, not so. And they beautiful. Wow, send them flowers. You know, in children's church, we love to say flowers, flowers. Shh. To all the mothers, praise the name of the Lord. Yes, do we have mothers who are here with us, married, and for you don't have this uniform, meaning you're not yet enrolled. Just put up your hand. Wow, we love you. We love you. Welcome, but you can still be enrolled. Hallelujah. Next time you don't miss out, okay? We have mothers that are going to be enrolled today. We should continue to pray for them as they come to be enrolled this day. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to celebrate those who have celebrated their birthdays and anniversary in the course of the week. If you've celebrated your birthday, just put up your hand. We want to celebrate. Wow, great, wonderful. Wow, anniversary and birthdays, hallelujah. Wonderful, amen, amen. May the good Lord to Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit remain over me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you so much for all your children, our friends who have celebrated either an anniversary or birthday. Father, may they see your goodness even in this new year to the glory of your name. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, indeed, this is a very special day. And I always love to say that, indeed, the women color the world. Just like I said at the beginning, imagine the world without women. So allow me brag off a little bit. Is it okay? <laughs> and introduce to you the one whose world I spice up and color. That is none other than the coolest dude around. <laughs> yes, I call him. Yes, I call him the coolest dude. You are welcome, John. I love you, God, and God loves you more. Hallelujah. And now the one I'm going to introduce next, I need to be very well behaved. Hallelujah. Allow me welcome a leader, a friend, a man of God, very humble, passionate man of God. Yes, we want to welcome you, our Vice Chancellor, <laughs> Professor Aaron Mushengezi. Together with my friend, Mama Pesh, an intercessor. Mama Pesh, we welcome you. Wow, we love you so much and we always pray for you. Praise the Lord. We are so happy to have you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Great. I want to pause there for a moment and also welcome our friends because we have sisters or oh, Mother's Union members who have come in from our sister parishes and chaplaincies. If you're there and you're visiting with us, Mother, you're special to us. Thank you. Wow. Welcome, Mama. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. I know that the fathers might be feeling bad and saying, eh, but Reverend Lydia is only focusing on the mothers. Today's Mother's Day. Hallelujah. But fathers, we love you. Please, mothers, let's also appreciate the fathers that are here and all the men. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is, if this is your very first time to fellowship with us, you are also our visitor and you're very special. First time visitors, just put up your hand so we can welcome you. You're praying with us for the very, wow, wonderful. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Please feel at home. Great, Jesus resides here. Th that can be your permanent seat. You don't take it, but every time you come, you can sit there. Praise the name of the Lord. Please turn to your neighbor. I want you to preach to your neighbor and say, neighbor, next time you remember to come with a visitor. Mm -hmm. Good things are found in the house of the Lord. And especially those who are seated next to empty seats, we need to fill up this place. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We also want to welcome our students who are back. We closed off last semester very, very well. The Easter semester and the Trinity semester started. Our students, just put up your hands, you who are back. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. We love you. And we always pray for you. Please come and join us as we continue to pray for this semester. Praise the name of the Lord. By the grace of God, this Wednesday, we were able to start the One Family Fellowship. 
a fellowship that brings all believers together. And that will be taking place every Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30. Friends, we had a good time in the presence of the Lord. Many of us were here. We read the word of God, shared from the word of God, and prayed. During this fellowship, I want to let you know that we are going to just be coming and open our hearts to the Lord and bask in the presence of the Lord. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I do you plan to attend next, this Wednesday? Let them give you an answer. You don't have to tell us the answer. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And by the grace of God, we are praying. We want to start cell ministry um, through this chaplaincy ministry. So if you're here, you've been praying for cell ministry, you want to be a part, please put up your hand. Um, you know, you don't have to put up your hand, but we want to let you know that on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday 10th, we'll be having a meeting from 5.45. Please come to the chaplaincy or to the offices, and indeed, we shall uh, have a meeting with you so you get to know more about the cell ministry. Thank you and thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't mind them. It's okay. They are taking their places. Hallelujah. Let's continue. But we want to let you know, friends, how the Lord has enabled us to give throughout uh, last week on Sunday and throughout the week. The offertory last Sunday was 991,200. Tithe was 25,000. Thanksgiving, 70,000. Tithe brought to office, 470,000. Tithe directly deposited to the account, 305,000. Sunday school, 136,400. First fruit, it was 10,000. Let's all clap to the Lord and thank the Lord for your generous giving. We shall continue to give because our God loves a cheerful giver. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, bands of marriage. I published the bands between, this is the third time of announcement, between Mr. Dixon Biarhanga at Hura, son of Reverend Canon Dr. Professor. I have seen Prof. Christopher, yes, his son, and Mama, Christine Biarhanga of Duhaga, Hoima City, together with Miss Nakavito Katsime, daughter of Mr. Mukasa and Mrs. Medias Kamwebaza of Andrew Mbarara City. They intend to get married on 14th May, 2022, at noon at the Church of the Resurrection, Bugolori Church of Uganda. Are they here? We can pray for them. We can ask our professor to stand up. He's my, with all due respect, he's going to be the contact person as we pray for them. He's my lecturer and my professor. Please. Oh, wow, we missed them in the first service. Please let's stretch our hands towards Prof as we pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you so much for the gift of marriage. We pray for our, our children, Dixon and Katsime. Please, as they intend to walk down the aisle, we ask you in your mercy that you surround them with your presence. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you go ahead of them and indeed provide for them. We pray that this day would be a success to the glory of your name. And their marriage will bring you glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Before I invite the Mother's Union members, we're going to uh, present a skit before us. Please allow me as well, introduce to you special people in our midst. I will say to you, friends, we are blessed to have a friend of many, a father to many, a mentor, and an evangelist. Not only, you know, an evangelist as we've known him, but he's also a digital evangelist. He is a husband to my friend, yes, Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, and he is our former vice chancellor, none other than Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi. We are so happy to have you, Papa. God bless you, and thank you for loving our sister and my friend. Hallelujah. The preacher this day, my dear friends, gifted woman of God, a daughter of the Most High God. Yes, she is the wife to um, 
to the one we've just introduced, Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyon Omuwati. Hallelujah. And she is a grandmother. She is the president of Mother's Union, and that's none other than Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. She's the we are so happy to have you this day. Come to speak to us. May God continue to refill. You did an amazing job in the first service, and we know there is more grace for you. God bless you as you bring his word. Please, let's put our hands together now as we receive Mother's Union drama team. They have a skit before the sermon. God bless you. So what is it? What is it? I'm actually expecting to see someone right now. Okay. How much? How much do you need? How much? 500. I'll give you 700. Is that enough? Anything for you, baby. Anything for you. I'll just give you 700. Avoid it right now to account. Yeah. So I'm expecting to see someone. Yeah, as usual, you go place. We'll meet. Okay, see you. Okay. Oh, hi, honey. Hello. Oh, sorry, How are you, I'm baby? sorry. Oh, I'm you're sorry welcome. For your yeah, yeah, I've been waiting for yeah, you. Yeah, you know the fellowship takes quite some oh, time. Oh, how was it? Fine. fine okay, okay. Yes. So I wanted us to meet. Okay. And I had just a lot of things to tell you, but just to begin with. I really had this pressing thing because everything home is done and you know I'm not working. How much? How much do you need? Like at least 300. Uh, can't 100,000 work? That no, should be enough for you. 100,000 can't work. I said at least. Not even my budget. Just, just work within that hair. budget. I wanted all things to work. Your hair well. looks okay, honey. Please. It is. You're beautiful. Please. It's not my fault. What? Honey, did I hear right? Did she just call you honey? She, she's just a friend. She's just a friend. She's a friend? Yes, she's a workmate. This is Rina. Rina is my sister. Excuse me. Excuse she, she's me. just out of the things. This is blood now. Excuse me, Rina. Uh -huh. Of all men, why did you choose mine? Really? I, th I thought you knew he's my husband. There are so many in the world. You live and you find them. He's my husband. We are married. My dear, 10 years. Of course, it's me. I, I am Mrs. Mugaga. You are Mrs. Mugaga? Yes. Oh, you have to look out for Mrs. Mugaga because you have got some things which cannot be seen at all. In fact, you have got some things that you have not got. So it cannot be a wife's marriage at all. Really? It cannot be a wife's marriage. 
God. No, I am done with you. I am done. Honey, honey, I please, done. please, honey, I still love you. I love you. I'm sorry. It was you? just once. Really? Was, I'll never do it again. No, please, no. please. Why did you come back? I gave you all the money you wanted. Why did you come back? Please, please, please. I don't want to see you again. Now she has found out. I can't see you again, okay? We are done. I'm done with you. I am done with you. Lord Jesus. Have mercy. Submit and love our husbands. This is too much. Help me to be nice even when we can. <sighs> Hello. Man, she has found out. She has caught us. I don't know what to do. She has finally found out. I have no idea what to do. I'm heading home, but I'm, I'm even scared. I don't know what to do. You think that will work? Okay. Lord, help me to be nice. Even when he reaches the door, welcome him nicely. Lord, have mercy. Help me. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know you'll make me strong. Yeah, thank you. Oh, honey, you came. Oh, okay, you're welcome. I didn't know. Did you hear me pray? <laughs> I think you didn't hear me. You're welcome. Thank you. I had prepared your juice for your favorite, just you know. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, how are you? How is God keeping you? Mrs. Mgaga, uh, I straight to the point. I got a dream. Uh, I, something was holding you, and I was like, what is going on? Then, after I still in the dream, then I saw God breaking the chains, and you really lived. Mr. Mgaga, God has a plan for you. I assure you, keep praying. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. First, I think this is really a timely message for me. I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but I'm happy. Oh, yesterday, I got good news, and that's what I wanted to tell my husband just shortly away. But I wasn't able. I went to the hospital yesterday. And you know what happened? The doctor told me. After 10 years, I'm four weeks pregnant. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm really sorry I cheated on you. Please forgive me. Pastor, Pastor, you must pray for me. I'm sorry I messed up. I, I cheated on my wife. I'm so sorry. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. There's nothing that is impossible in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord God, I thank you for these children. Amen. Bless them. Bless. Amen. Do miracles, Lord, as you did in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power, Lord. There Break the power. chain in the name of Jesus. Break in the chain in the name of Jesus. There is power.
that was very powerful. Can we give them another clap? Thank you very much, Mother's Union. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are so blessed to be here, uh, the Vice Chancellor and your wife. That sounds strange, isn't it? <laughs> but we <laughs> praise the Lord for your presence today. I thank God. Uh, we are very, very happy to be here back again after a while, and for you to give us that opportunity, thank you, uh, Reverend Lydia and the chaplain, for giving me the opportunity to come back here. Mary's Day, Mother's Union. Some of you may not know, maybe the, the chairperson will explain what it's all about, but it's a very wonderful group to belong to, and I encourage you to join if you haven't joined yet. It's not for mothers, if you haven't had a child, it doesn't necessarily mean you can't join. It is for married women, any married person who is married in the Church of Uganda can belong to Mother's Union. Uh, in Uganda, right now, we are trying to find out how many we are because the numbers have not been kept very well. I think by July, we should be able to know from the different dioceses. And um, the way we work, um, how I come in as president is we have 37 dioceses in the province of the Church of Uganda. I think you know some of them. We belong to Kampala Diocese. We have Namirembe, that's the central region, has about six dioceses. We have the eastern region, which has Karamoja, it has uh, Soroti and all eastern region. Then we have the northern region, which has Madi, West Nile. It has um, all those up there. And then the West, it has about 14 dioceses. So 37 in the total. And each of the dioceses has a president. So like Kampala, we have, uh, what's her name? She's new now, Elizabeth Chikoyo. Elizabeth is the new president from Jole Kamishani. And, uh, and Namirembe also has a new president, Mrs. Roslyn. So some, there are about 20 dioceses now that have, have voted in new, new presidents. So I become the president of the presidents. Yes. And they call me the Provincial Mothers Union President. So I'm at the provincial level. So I, I take care of the 37 presidents. Uh, we sit at the province and uh, are involved with whatever happens at the provincial level. So um, whatever we want to happen, we make it happen and bring it up to the top. So the presidents work with their chairpersons at the different levels, archdeaconry levels, parish levels, sub-parish levels. They all have leaders that the presidents work with. So you can see the impact that we can have when we are working in that way. And our main goal, we have five objectives. We'll, you'll hear them when we are, we are swearing in. But you know, what is marriage? We try to encourage people to get married and stay in marriage and enjoy marriage. We also do a lot of parenting, a lot of fellowship, and a lot of praying. Okay, So that's what we do. And this morning, I'm glad to, they've already introduced my husband, but like Reverend Lydia, I also want to boast a bit and show off, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, maybe you should stand up so that you see him properly. <laughs> uh, we've been married now for 37 years. We made 37 years um, last, last month. And we thank God. Uh, we are blessed with four children. They are now all grown up. They grew up from here. We thank God that God provided this environment for them to grow up. And now they are all grown up. And now we have six grandchildren. Yes. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to listen to your word. We pray that you speak. 
to us. There are many people going through afflictions of some kind. We pray, Lord, that you will be able to help and speak to us in a way that may be able to help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Now our readings were from Luke chapter 1, verse 26, and also Psalm 120. So I want you to keep your thumb at the Psalm 120 and, and Luke chapter 1 so that you can be able to refer to them. Today we celebrate Mary's Day. We also celebrate Mother's Day. And we think of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's a, very, a story of a very influential woman, chosen by God because she had found favor with God. She's highly favored and was branded belongs to God. You know, it's sometimes on Fridays, I think, you do many of the stuff, put on an, a uniform or something that is branded with Uganda Christian University. That is the brand. And I don't know what brand you have that can identify you as highly favored and chosen by God. So I'm asking for two volunteers if they can come up here just so that we demonstrate that. Can I have two people who are not Mother's Union members? Any two people? It's easy. Anyone? Thank you. Another person? Thank you for being brave. One other person. Yes, thank you. So I'm going to brand these people. And you tell me what brand they have. Can you see what it says? So we do a lot of things so that we brag, so that we don't forget. Okay, can you go around modeling? <laughs> right. Yes, pass here. What does it say? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Highly favored belongs to God. You can have your seats now. Thank you. Yes, sit with them. Highly favored, very, very clear. So I'm thinking, the angel came and said to Mary, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And he said, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. How do we get to hear from God that we are highly favored? If he came in this generation, would he choose you like these two ladies here who are highly favored and belong and say, yes, this person belongs to me? How does he do that? How would we know that we are highly favored and that we belong to God? In number six, he talks about the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Imagine God's face shining towards you and being gracious to you. That means you are highly favored. That means you belong to him. His face is toward you. And 1 Peter 3.12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. The eyes of the Lord. Can you imagine the eyes of the Lord being on me? And sometimes it says that I will seek the Lord's face continually. Why? Because I want the Lord's face to be toward me all the time. 
Because the Bible continues to say that when his face is turned against you, it means you are doing evil. And he does not like evil. So his face will be turned away from you and you cannot be favored. So who has branded you? Who do you identify with? Would you be chosen as one who is righteous and identified as one who is favored by God? After that, Mary was given a task by God. And this is uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 31. He says, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So the Lord is good to those who know him. And I want to know him. After that, he gives you a task. What task have you been given? Some of you think only the chaplain has the task. The assistant chaplain has the task. Or the reverend, the clergy. No. He says, maybe you are a wife. Maybe you are a husband, or a mother, or a father, or the CEO like the VC here. You are a secretary, you are an usher, you are an intercessor, you are a student. God has given you a task. And it's important for you to pick up that task. I remember when God requested me, <laughs> I call it request because I really didn't want this job. He asked me to be the, the president of Mother's Union. For some people, that sounds strange. How? Hmm? How do you hear that? How do you know? But I was praying in, on one of the travels that we had made with John. And no, the Lord tell, told me, you are going to work with women and family. And I told him, but I've been working. I'm a counselor for many years. I've been working with family and, and women. So I, I just don't know what you're saying. And so they came along and said, we would like you to be president, Mother's Union. And I said, no, don't even put my name there. Because they ask you, can we put your name so that you are voted in? And I said, no, I don't want to be voted in. So please, I said, well, we'll give you time to pray about it. So I talked to my husband, only him. I didn't talk to anybody else. And then after some time, one of my daughters that we look after, came and told me, Mommy, I had a dream. And in that dream, they were telling you to be the president of Mother's Union, and you had refused. And I looked at her and asked her many times, who told you? She said, Mommy, I had a dream. So I'm, I've come to ask you what I should pray for. And I said, yeah, exactly that, that I have refused. <laughs> and she didn't say, say it again. So... Eventually, we agreed with John that, okay, let, let the name go, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'll be the president. So we let the name go and let it hang. But the Lord kept giving me so many signs around that, and I didn't talk to nobody. I didn't ask anyone. I didn't know what goes on in that meeting, and so they requested me to go for the AGM. And I went for the AGM and sat. I, didn't, I decided to not even wear blue and white. I decided I'm going to wear something totally off because everyone in that meeting is wearing their color blue and it's a mother's union meeting and everybody's mother's union. So I went, I was in a green long dress and I sat in the back and I, was, I kept telling the Lord, you see, me, I know this is not for me. So they get, got to the place of choosing who will be and eventually we were two people. And, I, and so they said, come and talk about yourself. And the lady who went before me, you know, I've been president, I've been treasurer, I've been... Da, 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 da. She had so many things that she had done. And I said, I, I, I closed my eyes and told the Lord, Lord, there is your president. I do not know why you have brought me here to give me an embarrassment. I didn't know that I was running against this person. Remember, I had not asked about about this. So I didn't even know who was who, who was in this in this whole thing. So they went into voting and they voted and voted and voted. Eventually I took the place and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. When the Lord 
gives you a task. He gives you the task. We don't have to go, you know, saying, vote me, vote me. No, he will give you the, the task. So Mary was found, and she was told she was going to conceive and give birth to a son. So do your responsibility. What task is it? God has given you children. Like in the skit here. You are working too hard. Your children don't even know you. You are a father and you are away. Six months. They don't see you. So what are you doing with the task that God has given you? You are the vice chancellor. What are you doing with the task that God has given you? You are the wife of the vice chancellor. What, what are you doing there? You are the usher. It may look like a small thing. You are in the choir, but God has given you a task. I pray that you do it well. Supposing Mary had refused to do the task. <laughs> and he said, ah, Lord, mm, just, like, just like I did. Mm, yeah, I can't do that. President, no. I don't even have the time for that. He, she would have said, ah, Lord, do you know what it means to be pregnant when you are not married? And then claim that it is a pregnancy by, by what? Nobody will believe me. I am going to suffer. I do not want to suffer. Just leave me alone in my corner. So some of you are being chosen to be wives of people. And you refuse I remember when I was on, on campus, before I met John, I would look around, we'd be in fellowship, and I would look around, and I'm thinking, uh, I don't see anybody here, honestly. And some of our brothers used to come and walk around in sleepers, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going about with a brother who is walking around the campus in sleepers. Ah, no. So you would look around, some of you are doing that, and you're like, oh, 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 that one. So when he comes, he mm, no, never. <laughs> never. Hmm. The task you have been given. Some of you are in there, and then you start thinking that I got the wrong, the wrong person. <laughs> if God has given, supposing Mary said, you know, yeah, you have given me the wrong child. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong task. If you have got married, you are married to that person and you have to try and make sure that it works. You can see from the skit, the guy was cheating. So should I leave this guy because he's cheating? No. The Lord is good to those who know him. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Mary's response, how did she respond? I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. She recognizes God in everything. Oh, I can relate to that. God spoke to me. And I kept pushing it away. I said, no, it can't happen. When I walked in the room and Enid, Enid Tritwenka, some of you may remember her, was the one I was contesting against. And I said, Enid was even the mama in, uh, when we were in, on campus. Enid, Enid, ah, ah, Lord, you have got it wrong. To totally wrong. That she's is the best person that you could ever find. Now, after three months after I had been chosen, Enid started getting sick. She went to India for cancer treatment, and in no time she had died. She died. And then I bowed my head and said, okay, okay, Lord. Now I understand. I really do. Because Enid was so well versed with everything around Mother's Union. In fact, the last time we had a, a, a meeting with all the presidents, we asked her to speak about Mother's Union so that we, we get to know what we are supposed to do. Enid spoke from her head, not even written, from her head. She spoke and I took out my phone and recorded. I say, it was like Enid was speaking for the last time. And indeed she was speaking for the last time. And 
I said, Lord, you have plans that we can never, ever think through about. We don't know what's coming. So he chose me for that. What has God chosen you to do? Father Ron, Mary in her song in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 up to 55, Mary describes God. He knew, she knew God in every way. He's my savior, verse 47. He is mighty, verse 49. He is holy, verse 49. He is merciful, verse 50. He is strong, verse 51. My provider, verse 53. Faithful. So it shows the length, the depth of her knowledge of who he is. Do you know God that, you know, like I am speaking and saying, he told me. Can you say that? That he told me that this is what's going to happen. He told me because I have a relationship with him. She has this deep and rich knowledge of God in her everyday life. She has the ability to recognize what God has done for her in her life and for her. Is God reflected in your everyday life? Do you recognize him in everything that you are doing? For example, looking for a parking slot. I was in Kampala, I think, two or three days ago. I normally don't go into Kampala, but there are no parking slots at all when you go right in there. So I said, Lord, I'm going into Kampala, but I do please need a parking space. <laughs> please provide one that is near I was going to get my drivers, renew my driving permit. It's a very, by the way, it's one of the best. I told them, you guys, I've never seen this in Uganda. It's, I don't know if some of you have renewed. It's a very, the system is beautiful. I wish everyone, including you people here at UCU, may see. Everyone is seated doing their work. I got out of there in 30 minutes with my new driving permit. 30. And yet they were like the people that are here, are the people that were in that room. But I got 30 minutes, I had my driving permit. Anyway, I prayed for a parking spot near the railway station, and I got it. I said, thank you, Lord. Don't forget to thank him. I thanked him. Thank you, Lord. Then I moved on to where um, Kenya Airways is, KCCA. There's no parking there because they park from about 6.30. The Lord provided like a parking space, which I didn't even have to pay for. <laughs> See how he answers prayer. So is God reflected in your everyday life? Do the children hear you? Because they, they, my children give a testimony. I, I pray a lot for parking slots. And now it's like, hmm, mommy, whenever mommy pay, prays for a parking place, she gets it. Today we were coming and the car died somewhere just after the gate. It stopped, it stopped, it stopped like 10 times. And then it stopped completely. And now we couldn't get another car to come. So John prayed just there and then and said, Lord, we are praying that this car moves so that we are able to, to find space to pass with another car. And indeed, and it moved. And he parked aside. If those of you have been to our place, if you are in the middle of the road, no other car can pass by. So, we came. <laughs> ah, some of you, when you knock your toe, you are walking and you knock your toe, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> when children are sick, you know, someone is dying, is sick, what do you do? You know, sometimes when you have finished a conversation, you have had visitors, you've talked about many things. How do you conclude? At the dinner table, in the car, who do you turn to? So basically it boils down to what is your prayer life like? Because we've seen Mary. Mary, uh, highly favored, belongs to God. Because of that, she was given a task by God, and her response is that she recognized God in everything and was able to say, I'm the Lord's servant. So she's a prayerful person. So before we start out with affliction, it's important to ask, do you spend time in prayer by yourself? 
Do you spend time in prayer with your spouse? Do you spend time in prayer with your family? Very important. You have to have a steady prayer life so that when afflictions come, you are able to stand. Don't just start praying just because afflictions have come. So our theme for today is the power of prayer amidst affliction. The power of prayer amidst affliction. So our psalm, Psalm 102, if you can turn to that, is reflective of what I want to point out today, that how should we pray while in affliction? In affliction? How are we supposed to pray? So Psalm 102 is a prayer of one who is afflicted and who is crying out in the midst of suffering or affliction. And most of the time, it's unexplained suffering. We also draw attention to our theme for the province this year, hope beyond afflictions. That is taken from Lamentations chapter 3, verse 24 to 26. So we are going to learn what should be the pattern, what should we be doing when we are in affliction. But I want to also put a disclaimer here, because sometimes when we talk about affliction, many people think that, ha, huh, marriage, ah, uh, marriage is full of affliction. I'm not going there. So I want to encourage you who are not there that marriage is a good thing. We may have reflected it maybe wrongly to some of you, but I want to assure you that marriage is a good place to be. We have counseled many people. We have talked to them in premarital counseling and said marriage is good. In the context of it, it's a good thing. But it's at the same time, there can come a few things that disrupt it, so we have to be careful. And whenever afflictions come, the first thing that we do is pray. So verse 1 and 2 says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. And verse 2 says, do not hide your face from me when I'm in distress. Incline your ear. Inclining is like put your ear to my, do not, to my mouth so that you can hear me. Answer me speedily when I call. That is verse 1 and 2 of uh, Psalm 102. So what is prayer? Prayer is a conversation with God, just like I'm talking to you. It's being his friend, like Dr. Lydia said. Doctor, yes, it's coming, coming up. Being his friend. <laughs> Being his friend. I'm a friend and I can talk to him because I know him. Giving our attention to God, talking to him and listening to him, asking him to guide us, asking him to advise, asking him to bless us, giving thanks and asking him in petition. That is like interacting with God. That's really what it is. It doesn't matter, you don't have to have amazing words, you just talk to him like you talk to any other person. Just tell him, Lord, I'm here. I don't exactly know how to talk to you, but I think you'll teach me. So eventually you learn and are able to talk to him. Sometimes we use the, the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, to remind us how to pray. So A is adoration. Adore him. Say, Lord, you are worthy. There is no one like you. Look at the heavens that you have made. Look at the sky. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at the trees. Wow. You just said and things happen. What an amazing God you are. Then we go to the sea. That is confession. We confess, Lord, we have not been good in what we have said, in what we have thought, in what we have touched, in what we have seen. Lord, forgive us. Because we are supposed to be holy as you are holy. And we have not met this standard. Forgive us. Then we go to the T, which is thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. When we got in the car to come, we just started singing, Tuk Tendereza. Say, Tuk Tendereza, Yesu. Because you managed to go. We got here in the first service 15 minutes late. Why? Because that car. But we were able to pass. And we were able to get a mechanic to go and work on the other car. And we thank God that we have more than one car. <laughs> you see? 
thank, thank, thank. We thank God for our children. We thank God for the grandchildren. We thank God for the work he's given us. Uh, 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 we've opened up a counseling center in Nadia. And, you know, I, I was just reflecting the other day, uh, looking at the clients who have come. We have gone over the 100 mark of clients who have gone in that place. And we, we, f we find that they come in and they get the help that they need. And we pray for them. Isn't God amazing? So what has God done for you? He's given you a husband. Getting a husband is not easy. Hey. But some of you take it for granted. Say, hey, who else could he have got? <laughs> My dear, it is not a joke. I was telling the people in the first service that they told us to pray for our husbands when we were in S5. And these days we are telling them to pray even earlier. And even for our children, we started praying for our children's husbands when they were very young. Five years, three years, we would pray for Sarah's husband. We have one girl and three boys. And now that Sarah is married for the last 12 years, 12, and the boys, uh, the two boys are also married. But we were praying. Hey. So when I met Sarah's husband, I said, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you for many years. That you may take care of my daughter properly. That you may love her. That she may enjoy her marriage. I've been praying. We've been praying. We pray for these children so, so much. So we thank God for that. So supplication then, S, is when you are asking, Lord, we are asking for this, the daily bread, you know? This is what we need. This is what we want. This is what we, we ask for, okay? So Luke 11 talks about the disciples asking Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he uses the same format. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. That's adoration. Forgive us our sins. That's confession. And give us this day our daily bread. That's supplication. And there's a song. You know, for me, I don't know if there's anybody like me, but for me, I use a lot of song even for prayer. My, my daily life is made up of singing. So these things remind us. So I'm going to teach you a song. The first service learned it very well. So I'm just encouraging you that you'll also, you'll, you'll also learn it. This is how it goes. Rejoice, always pray, constantly give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Those who know it, sing with me one more time. Rejoice, always pray, constantly give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Have you learned it? So let's sing a, a verse by verse. Rejoice, always pray. Rejoice, always pray. Let's sing that again. Rejoice, always pray. Now the next one. Constantly give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Good, they have the words up. Hmm? Again, faster. Rejoice, always pray, constantly give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. One more time. Always pray, constantly give thanks in all circumstances, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We won't do the rounds because it's, a, it's a because of time. But you can sing it. One begins and then another comes in. So prayer. Basically, I want you to remember that verse because you have to pray constantly and give thanks in all circumstances. That's what the will of God is. The next step in prayer while in affliction is you need to explain to God what is going on? When I'm teaching counseling, 
and I thank God. You see, I'm still doing a bit of teaching here. So I think I've been called again to teach some uh, counseling class. I teach the master's students. I've been a teacher teaching s counseling for the last 20 something years. I taught in Makerere, all those, students, all those counselors that are doing masters, I, I taught them. And one of the things that we do when we are teaching counseling is that there is a way we counsel. When the client comes in, you have to ask them what is going on. That's the very first thing. You need to have the context. Oh, I broke my leg. You can't stop there. Mm -hmm. You broke your leg. What were you doing? And you see the night I drank and then I fell down the steps and then mm -hmm, now the drinking comes in. You see, you keep getting more and more because of what is going on. What is the context? What is happening? So that God is asking us to describe the affliction. Disclose the affliction. Cry out to him and say, this is what's happening, Lord. Pour out your heart. Pray out aloud. Tell him what is going on in great detail. And you find that in verse 3 to 11, that's what this guy is doing. What is the affliction description? He says, my bones burn like furnace. That is verse 3. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my distress, I groan aloud and I'm reduced to skin and bones. I have a sleepless night like a lonely sparrow. I am lonely. I am crying. Verse 9, for I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. My eating is affected. Lamentations 3 continues. Jeremiah, verse 2, 3, 2. It brought me into darkness. I don't see any light. I dwell in darkness like I am long dead. Verse 6. My skin and my flesh are wasted. I am bitter. I am going through tribulation. I am walled in with no escape. I am weighed down with heavy chains. I'm blocked. Like there are stones of block in front of me. That's verse 9. My paths are crooked. I am mangled. So what are you experiencing? We are here with Mother's Union and Father's Union. Maybe you're, there's something going wrong. I mean, these, I get married people almost every week. I get married people coming in for something. And so they sit there and I say, mm -hmm, what is wrong? Uh, where shall we start? <laughs> And sometimes it's like 10 years back, uh, 10 years we, we have not really been uh, talking for the last, honey, how many years? Like seven. Yeah, I think seven. And COVID made it worse. You know? <laughs> so, what, what are you expecting from me? Oh, we want to just talk to someone else because we have failed to work it out. So, we are talking to God because we have failed to work it out. Is it a misunderstanding? Is it a sexless life? Is it quarreling, fighting? Recently, we, Kampala Diocese Central Region had a wonderful marriage seminar. By the way, when we hold these seminars, please come. Because you learn so much. There was so much to learn there. And so at the end of the day, when they had spoken, the people who were speaking, they said, okay, if there's anyone here who has a problem that you want to pray for. Now, that is very, very, very serious. Because I will not put up my hand and say, here I am. First of all, I don't know whether my husband knows that I have a problem or he wants everyone to know that we have a problem. So it becomes a problem. Because I don't want anyone to know that I have a problem. So you become weighed down. All these things you've been saying, my bones are burning. Eh? Is my bones are clinging to my flesh. You are losing weight. You, are, you, you, you know, they can see the bones and they say, what's wrong? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Mm. Are you okay? Yes. How is your husband? He's, uh, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. But he's not okay. 
you are, you are crying every night. You are lonely. You thought you'd get married, but you are not, you are not, <laughs> it's not working. It is not working. Could be your health. It could be childlessness. It could be a child who is giving you trouble. You know, I get children in there. Children are on drugs. You know? One of the children told me, yeah, however strict they are, the drugs are still in school. And some of you, these things are passing by you without knowing even. They lock themselves in the room and you think, Bambi, he's in S6, he's reading very hard. Kumbe, he's drunk completely and out. But you don't even know. Some of the children are becoming homosexuals. So you see earrings <laughs> and you see all kinds of hair and the, the boy is walking like a girl. <laughs> and you say, Lord, describe. He says, describe the affliction. Disclose. Now many times, like Psalm 102 verse 10 says, because of your great wrath, because of your indignation and anger, you have taken me up and thrown me down. That is what we say to God. Lord, you are the one who is doing this. You have thrown me down. So many times because we think God could have done better for us, we don't want to talk to him. We don't want to describe it. We say, what doesn't he know? Eh? Didn't he know that I needed a husband? Why did he give me this one? Hmm? Didn't he know that I needed children? Why isn't he giving me children? Lamentations 3.8 says, Though I call through all these afflictions, I cry for help, but he shuts out my prayer. So praying becomes difficult in affliction because we believe he's the one who has caused the pain. But I want to encourage you never to give up prayer. Never. May you never stop talking to God for any reason. You'd rather tell him, I don't want to talk to you, God, but I'm talking to you anyway. Rather than say, I've shut up, I'm not talking anymore. I've given up, I'm turning my face away from God. When you turn your face away from God, you will not get the highly favored that belongs to God. So then we move into hope. Now, we are afflicted. The afflictions are there. What are we supposed to do so that we move beyond the affliction? Verse 12 is a beautiful one. It says, but you, O oh Lord, are enthroned forever. You, O oh Lord, are enthroned forever. It's like we are turning from all these afflictions and remembering that God is on the throne forever. He is seated at the throne and he's not going to move. And it reminds me of this song. We sang it also in the morning. Ascribe greatness to our God. Ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. Ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. Our God of faithfulness and without injustice, good and hard is he. some of the songs like that giving the greatness to God 
He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is enthroned forever. And we say, I will bless the Lord. My soul shall boast and glory in that that he is the Lord, that he is matchless. There's no one like him. He's incomparable. Amen? He is God. So leave him in that position. Many of us try to pull him down when we are afflicted. That God, no. You, it cannot be me. I am not accepting that. I'm even changing religion. I thought I was saved. I thought, you know, how can I be going? How can it be me who is going through this? No, no, no. He says, acknowledge his sovereignty. Secondly, he says he will arise. Verse 13. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. Remember, we are highly favored. We belong to God and says he will arise in his time and have pity on me. I have explained to him what it is that I'm going through. And he will arise. 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 Take your place. Be enthroned on our praise, arise, King of kings, holy Lord, as we sing, arise. See? He says, he will arise. Are we willing to wait for him to arise? And verse 17 says, he will regard your prayer. He will respond to your prayer. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute and he does not despise prayer. I know he will arise. Because the battle has been won even before it started. You know, I think it was last year, before, just before COVID, we were going around all the dioceses and the Lord had given me something from Deuteronomy, that we are in a war, we are fighting a war. Those, that time when our archbishop was going through difficulties, you know, it was a difficult time for families. Some men would come home and say, hmm, if the archbishop could do it, just leave me alone. <laughs> you know, we, we had gone down to the dogs, if you understand that. It was terrible. And so uh, the Lord gave me that, Deuteronomy, I can't remember exactly which chapter, but it was like, there is a war. We are fighting a war. We do have to fight this war. And we have already won the war because we are on the winning side. God has given us victory even before the battle is over. Sissy <laughs> Wynant, I like Sissy Wynant. She's one of my best singers. You can check her up. She says, I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can shout now. I don't have to wait till the battle's over. I can shout now. I don't have to wait till the battle's over. I can shout now. I don't have to wait till the battle's over. I can shout now. Because we have already won. So you don't have to wait for the affliction to end for you to be able to win the battle. Because God has already won the battle and we are conquerors. I know that God will respond. So hope beyond affliction, acknowledge his sovereignty, know that he will arise and now we know that he will deliver. He will deliver us. There is deliverance. Deliver me. From all my fears. That's what he did, Lamentations 3, 4. Delivered me from all my fears. Fear can be a very difficult thing to handle. I think some of you may have heard, I, I got an accident as I was going back one time from, the, from Bali. I was coming from Bali, Mother's Union, meeting the leaders. And the car went backwards and overturned. Our provincial Mother's Union car. 
By the way, we need a new car. If anybody has an offer, that would be a wonderful thing. But it went backwards. At such a speed, you know we are living on a hill, and it went back on that hill and overturned. And I have never, to date, I mean, I've always talked about trauma and fear and even helped people, but I had never had that kind of fear for myself. But this time, every time I would close my eyes, I just see the, the car going backwards. In fact, even today, I feel sorry for my husband sometimes because the car, remember, it didn't have power in it, and now he was making it go backwards. I said, darling, I'm not able to handle this one. Why? Because I have such a fear now for cars going backwards, especially on a slope. So when it rains, I, I, I tell the Lord, that, Lord, you know, I need to go out today, so I don't need rain on this road at all, because there, there's another way you can go, but it's so, so steep. Uh -huh. Fear. Who is going to deliver me from my fear? He said he delivered me from all my fears. Fear of the husband leaving you, fear of dying, fear of getting COVID, fear of getting cancer, fear of fear. He delivered me. He saved me from all my troubles. Lamentations 3, 6, and 17. For the eyes, I'm reminding you, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. First Peter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. So he concludes and says in verse 18, let it be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. So this is going to be recorded that yes, there was affliction, but yes, I cried to the Lord, and yes, the Lord delivered me. That's it. Prayer in affliction. There's no more I can say. Let it be recorded for a generation so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. May the Lord help you through the affliction that you are going through that you may cry to him. Let us pray. I want you to just take time to reflect. What is it that you are experiencing right now? We'll begin with the good things. Thank you, Lord, because you've given us homes, given us parents, given us wives, husbands, given us jobs, you've given us food. Thank you, Lord, given us children, grandchildren, what a blessing. You've blessed us in many, many ways. We want to thank you. But Lord, we also want to disclose that there are some things that are not going very well in our lives. It could be between husband and wife, between parents and children, or just fights within ourselves. We are not walking well with you. Maybe we've messed up like we saw in the, in the skit. You know, we are, we are more concerned about another girl than our wives or another man than our husband. Maybe we've become pregnant when we are not supposed to become pregnant out of wedlock. We are ashamed of what we have done. Maybe it is a disease, cancer, HIV, We are weighed down. We feel helpless and hopeless. We feel shame. We are at a low point, a hard place. We are broken. But Lord, we are reminded too that you choose your people because they are righteous and you favor them and they belong to you. And because they belong to you, you give them tasks. These tasks sometimes are hard, and that's where we get our afflictions. So we want to just tell you that the work is hard, that things are difficult, but 
that we acknowledge your sovereignty. We know that you are enthroned forever. A God who made the heaven and the earth, what is it that you cannot do? <laughs> you just said, and things happen. You said, let there be, and that came. So Lord, the little things that are in our lives, there's nothing you cannot do. So we ascribe greatness to you, Lord, because your work is perfect and your ways are just. If it is something that we did wrong, Lord, we pray that you forgive us, that your face may be turned to us, that, Lord, you may favor us, that, Lord, we may seek to be righteous. We know that you will arise and have pity on Zion and favor us. We thank you because the battle has been won even before we end it. We know we are victorious. Thank you for the victory that you give us every day. We know that you respond. We know that you deliver us. We know the things you've delivered us from. We know the things you've saved us from because your eyes are on us and your ears are open to our prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Rejoice, always pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let us appreciate um, Canon Dr. Ruth. Thank you so much. And let's give a very big one to the Lord. Hallelujah. Our Father is gracious, is very kind to us. The speaker has reminded us again and again that our Father's ears are wide open. So please pray at all time. Just help me turn to your neighbor and just tell your neighbor, now you know what to do when you're afflicted. Let them give you, yeah. Uh, what are they supposed to do? Pray, 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 hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. Let's appreciate uh, Canon Dr. Ruth again. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, it, indeed, it's a special day. I'm going to invite Carol, Mrs. Uh, Dembele Ayesu, to come in. I thought my brother was going to make the loudest noise. Reverend Simon Peter, hello. <laughs> Come on now. Yes, now you are present. Yeah. She is the chairperson, Mother's Union here, and she's going to give us a brief speech. Then later she will invite the sisters and their husbands who are going to be enrolled today to the, the chaplain will then come up. Uh, praise God, church. Praise God indeed. Um, I'd like to welcome you to this very special day. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Thank you so much for being part of this. Your presence means a lot to us. Uh, this is Mother's Union Mary's Day celebration. So all the ladies you see in uh, white and blue are indeed dressed beautifully. So please allow me and can we appreciate them? Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to welcome, uh, I know the, the welcomed guests, uh, maybe stars, but please allow me to point out just one special invited guest, that is Mrs. Uh, Leticia Iguma, please, I think you're in here, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Leticia, for coming. Leticia is uh, coming from St. Francis. St. Francis is actually um, a sister chapel those that do not know. So every time there is an official event, we show sure love to one another and invite each other. So thank you so much for coming. Um, I would like to also take this opportunity to um, mention that uh, in Mother's Union, I have a team I work with. I do not do this tremendous job alone. I think I'm going to take opportunity to also um, if, if, um, tell them or ask them to stand up as I recognize their presence. Most of them are not around because they gave me the apologies. You know, this is a day that is cutting us in between God taking children to school. So um, I have my vice chairperson as Mrs. Enid Bukenya. Um, if she's around, she could stand. 
she's not around. Then we have uh, uh, Mrs. Patience Kamsime as uh, the chairperson of, of Christian Women Fellowship. She's also taking a child to school. We have uh, her vice as Mrs. Joy Kamoga. Yes. Uh, we have the secretary as Mrs. Diana uh, Katsime. She has been around, but she's at the venue trying to hand a few things. So please clap for her. Um, I've seen our treasurer around, uh, Mrs. Allen Monjere. Please stand up for recognition. Yes, she's doing a tremendous job. Thank you so much for the work you do. Uh, we have people that we call members on the team. Uh, in Mother's Union, we have two members. One of them is uh, Mrs. Grace Mulindra. We all know what happened. They lost um, a relative, so please continue praying with them. We also have uh, a member in Mother's Union, Mrs. Abo Helen. I don't know if she's here. She could stand up for recognition. Okay, she's not here. So in also Christian women, we have two members that uh, sit on the committee. One of them is uh, Ruth Mazede. Uh, she's not here as well. Then we have um, Sarah Asima as well. So please, that is the team we work with in Uganda Christian University. We work together with Christian Women Fellowship. Let me also take this opportunity um, to thank her Excellency, Dr. Ruth Senyoni, our Provincial Mothers Union President. It's indeed an honor to have her, and for me and my dear husband, we are delighted to have her and Papa John. Thank you so much for being there for us. They actually waited us and canceled us. So it is that special for us. Um, let me also take this opportunity to thank my dear clergy, the chaplaincy. Honestly, I wouldn't have done this, or we wouldn't have done this without that team of the chaplaincy. Thank you so much. In a special way, I would like to thank, uh, I don't know whether the Father's Union President or Chairperson is here. Oh, yes, but I'll ask uh, Mr. Edmund, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Duncan, to Mohammed to stand for recognition. Why? Um, there are very many things as Mother's Union we do, but we cannot do it without their help. So thank you so much, Duncan, for the great work. In a special way, please allow me to introduce our husbands, all our husbands. I'm going to do it in a special way because I'm married to Mganda. Please allow me. Um, our dear husband. Um, why I am, am I doing that? Um, honestly, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. They are doing tremendous support. Most of the ladies here would come for practice and go back late. So we thank you for the many opportunities, or the many support, the, uh, very many tremendous support you give to us, and financial as well. In a special way, let me thank my girls. Don't they look beautiful? Yes. Thank you so much, my girls. You are doing such a, a tremendous job. Thank you for leading in choir. In a special, let me point out Mama Tama Sembiro. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, it, yeah. Being a Mama Musumba, she's always there for us. She's supportive. I cannot take that for granted. Yes. Um, let me also introduce uh, or maybe recognize the presence of our new enrollee. Uh, our new members, why am I doing this? Without them, this cannot be so special. When we have enrolling members, it's such a beautiful session for us. So thank you for allowing to accept to join in Mother's Union, and your husbands as well. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to thank the music director, Rocklin, in a very, very special way. She's always there for us. You've heard that we are always the leading. Um, history has it that we have done well in music. She has really done a great job. Thank you so much, Rocklin. We appreciate that. Let me conclude by saying this. Um, we are inviting all marrieds to join Mother's Union. It's such a beautiful place to be. Fellowship, if I, if I can mention a few things, one of the things you are telling the uh, new members as we're orienting them, and one of the things I love about Mother's Union is um, 
there is growth, so much growth you cannot get anywhere else. Yeah, in our marriages, in, in, in the spirit, even the inner beauty that you need. But even still, um, sometimes you have things that we're going through in our marriage, and we don't know where to, what to do or where to turn. So Mother's Union is a place or pl platform to help us grow. So please, if you're out there, please come and join us. And we have fellowship every Thursday uh, at 5, just above Chaplain C. So you're all very welcome. Thank you all for coming. Um, let me take this opportunity to uh, appreciate the presence of our VC. I, I didn't want to um, say it again, but I feel so bad because Mama Patience is a big support in our team. Thank you so much, Mama Patience and the team for being there. Um, thank you all for coming. You're all invited to the luncheon. The guest speaker is uh, just on her way. Please do not miss the topic is just so hot. But let me also... <laughs> The devil is such a liar. I was just about to forget to introduce the hottest guy in my life. <laughs> Reverend Dembe. <laughs> ah, thank you so much. He is the hottest guy I know, you know, and he is a man of God. He preaches the gospel like never before. So thank you so much, my husband, for the support. Thank you so much. I cannot take that for granted. I love you so much. Yes. Um, right now, I think I'll take the opportunity to invite the new members on stage so that we can go on with the next session of enrolling them. You're welcome. Please come on stage. Jokote, tende, reza, yesu. Yes, Father's Union are so organized as Father's Union. Yeah. I'll now invite the, uh, the, the chair person, chair man of Mother's Union to read to us the names of those who are going to be inducted. So we begin knowing who are these people because we're doing it and you are witnesses as they're being admitted into Mother's Union Thornycroft Chapel. Um, among the new enrollees, we have Mrs. Patricia Nabimanya Asasura. Please clap for her and her husband as well. 
we have uh, Mrs. Peace Atuijikira Twonjeri. I hope so. <laughs> and her husband, we have Mrs. Rachel Diana Namuyombo Masiga. We have Mrs. Maureen Mukundane Kalema. We also have Mrs. Evelyn Kansime. We have uh, Mrs. Evelyn Niwasima Noel. Then we have Mrs. Evelyn Kansime. And then we have Mrs. Marion Amanya Tuino Mojusha. We also have one member that we are going to receive in Mother's Union called Mrs. Esther Masiga. Okay, we will begin um, the enrollment. Um, sound room, we have a section at the end of this exercise where we participate as a congregation. Uh, please look up uh, the liturgy for enrollment of Mother's Union so that at that point we can participate together as a congregation. I also want you to know that the husbands of these uh, beautiful ladies are standing behind them to support them as they are enlisted into this powerful fellowship. Yes, dear pastor. The Mother's Union... Uh, uh, before, before you, you get there, yeah. uh, let me add it right here. The Lord be with you. The aim of Mother's Union is the advancement of the Christian faith in the sphere of marriage and the family life. We are now going to admit new members to Mother's Union, and this will be a wonderful and joyful occasion. I will now invite the chairperson, Mother's Union, to remind us of the objectives of Mother's Union. The Mother's, Union's object, the Mother's Union Society and its objectives are, number one is to, up, to uphold Christ's teachings on the nature of marriage and to promote its wide understanding. To encourage parents to bring up children in the faith and life of the church. To maintain a worldwide fellowship of Christians united in prayer worship and service, to promote conditions in society favorable to stable family life and promotion of children and protection of children, sorry, to help those whose family life has met with diversity. The purpose of Mother's Union is to be, um, the purpose of Mother's Union is to especially concerned with all that strengthens and perceives marriages and Christian family life. Membership is open to all those who have been baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity and intend to support and work for the aim and for the aim, purpose and objectives of the society. Members are united in prayer and service to draw forth the, gl the glory of God and to help forward the work of the church. Turn to you, candidates, and I'm going to invite you to make your promises towards the end of the pledge you are holding. We will um, continue together. And so I ask you now, do you wish to be admitted as a member of the Mother's Union? At your baptism, you are signed with the sign of the cross to show that you must not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified and manfully to fight under his banner against sin, the world and the devil and to continue as Christ's faithful soldier and servant unto your life's end. Do you stand by this? We have just read the five objectives of Mother's Union. Do you promise by God's grace to uphold and support them by word and action. I will, I will, I will. 
when you try to plan your life to include worship in, in church, prayer, and Bible reading, we have had the names of those going to be enrolled. I will mention those names for emphasis one more time. Evelyn Nuwasi Manuel, Marion Amanya Twinomugisho, Patricia Nabimanya Asasira, Peace Atujuchire Tuongeire, Rachel Diana Namuyomba Masiga, Maureen Mukundane Kalema, Evelyn Kansime, those are going to be admitted into Mother's Union. And so to those whose names I have read, I admit each of you as a member of Mother's Union in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I'll ask the person now to hand over the certificates to each one of you. Receive these certificates to remind you of your promises, and may the Lord be with you. Let us stretch our hands towards them, congregation, as we pray for them. Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless these, your daughters, and bless their families. Bless their lives, and the word and your word, grant that they will persevere to the end, even as they serve you in Mother's Union. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have today witnessed the admission of the new members into Mother's Union. I now turn to your congregation and ask, will you do all you can to welcome, support, and pray for them. Let me ask so that we repeat that resoundingly. Will you do all you can to welcome, support, and pray for them? I will now invite every member of Mother's Union to join us together with those who have been newly enrolled in this prayer. Is a mother's union prayer at the bottom of the page and it's projected. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave marriage to be a source of blessing to mankind, we thank you for the joys of family life. Pour out upon us your Holy Spirit that we may truly love and serve. Bless all who are married and every parent and child. May we know your presence and peace in our homes. Fill them with your love and use them for your glory. Unite us in prayer and worship in love and service. That strengthened by your grace, we may seek to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give God a mighty hand. I now invite everybody to stand and Mother's Union will lead us through the anthem of Mother's Union.
going to ask these Vagole to walk back to their seats now. Please be seated. And I'll invite the chairperson one more time as we recognize those who have served. We are going to do it in the afternoon session. Reverend Lady, it's now time to worship with our offerings. Okay. We're going to invite the Mother's Union Choir to lead us in a song as we worship with our tithe offering and thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Test and see that the Lord is good. I would like all of us to stand up and dance because God loves the cheerful giver. Amen. So those who have prepared thanksgiving, you are bringing it in an envelope and we shall put it together. With the offertory and type, we shall do it all together. Amen. joyful noise to the Lord and a thunderous hand clap. Hallelujah. Shall we please pray together as we conclude while we are standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you for drawing us together in your presence. You have allowed us to worship you and we continue to pray that as we depart from this place, we shall continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we want to say thank you for speaking to us about prayer, for reminding us indeed the call that Mary responded to, and again reminding us that each and every one of us are called 
and given a unique assignment. So we pray as we go through the week and the many days ahead of us, our prayer is that we shall walk in that ordained mission for each and every one of us. And for many who haven't yet realized their purpose and calling, we pray that you will speak to your children clearly. Father, we know we are afflicted in a number of ways, but we are confident that indeed burdens are lifted at Calvary, burdens are lifted in your presence, burdens are lifted in prayer. We pray that you will enable each and every one of us to pray without ceasing as long as we live. My sister and brother, there may be a need that you feel you need to mention before the Lord that you don't want to go with. Please take a minute and speak to the Lord as an individual. His ears are wide open and his eyes are upon you. Speak to your father. Is there anything too hard for me that says the Lord? What seems to be impossible in the eyes of, the, of many is very possible with me that says the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, shall we please join in the words of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. While we are still standing, allow me please invite um, Canon Dr. Ruth's husband to please pray and bless us. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Father, we are so thankful for marriage for family and the joys that we get out of it. But we are also mindful of those that are in marriage or in families where they are burdened. Even as we've been hearing the expounding of your word. We thank you that you have invited us that when we are in affliction of any sort we should bring it to you in prayer. And that you are more willing to receive our prayer than we are to pray. Teach us to pray unceasingly. And so thank you as you bring us to the conclusion of this service. May we go out with the assurance you have been with us and you will be with us. And now may the peace of God which is greater than we can understand. Guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon your marriages, be upon your families, be upon all your, the tasks that God has entrusted you with, and may that blessing never leave you now. Hallelujah. A big, big hand clap to our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Great. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, thank you for being a good neighbor throughout the service. For not distracting me. <laughs> for not making me make noise in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Tell your neighbor, come again. I want to sit next to you next Sunday. Hallelujah. By the way, the instrumentalists are not only the Reverend Canon and... Um, Mama Tama Sembilo's children, but they're also my children and my friends. Yes. Let's appreciate them, please. Thank you so much, Epa, Elisha, the young man. Thank you. God bless you so much and continue to bless you abundantly. We are now going to join in in that last song. May God bless you as we do.